everyone, and welcome to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kev, and we're keeping it real. Our hope is that we, as a collective unit, as one body of people, are going to be able to go out and change the world. However, in order to do this, we must first make some key individual changes within ourselves, and then take these changes and go out and positively affect the world. Some important individual changes include changing our perceived stereotypes, our issues with other people based on their race, their gender, and anything else that we hold deep within ourselves that we really need to get rid of in order to fully become a loving person, an accepting person, and a compassionate person. Kev? Right, and so our goal with this whole show is basically to create a greater awareness about all these issues that are going on with students and even our whole community uh, right. that really affect them. And I think that we're going to try to bring in a lot of diverse groups to this show and right. hopefully get their perspectives and views on a lot of these issues. And by doing that, uh, break down a lot of these barriers that are continuing to separate us and end these stereotypes and even all these things that are uh, deterring us from getting to see each other for a human being first and foremost. Right, because that is what we are. We are all human beings. At the core of ourselves, we are all humans. We deserve to be right. treated with respect, to be treated equally, and to be treated as brothers and sisters. And our first episode is called People Helping People. Right. And today we have some guests who are going to show us how they are helping not only themselves, but also other people in their organizations and other people outside of their organizations. And right now we would like to read to you our mission statement, which is actually the premise of our show. Yeah, it's a pretty strong quote. Go ahead, yes, Steph. I love this quote. Um, it goes, when I was young and free and my imagination had no limits, I dreamed of changing the world. As I grew older and wiser, I realized the world would not change. I decided to shorten my sights somewhat and change only my country, but it too seemed immovable. As I entered my twilight years in one last desperate attempt, I sought to change only my family, those closest to me, but alas, they would have none of it. And now, here I lie on my deathbed and realize, perhaps for the first time, that if only I changed myself first, then by example, I may have influenced my family. And with their encouragement and support, I may have bettered my country. And who knows, I may have changed the world. Pretty wow. powerful. That is really powerful. I, th I think, you know, it really just goes to show that the change has to start with us, you know, with like the certain individual, right? And from then, from there, we can branch off and create a bigger change, and hopefully, one day, really impact this whole world. Right. What are some individual changes you think we can start implementing today? Uh, yeah. I think you know, even just like what, um, going down the street and just you know saying hi to somebody and just not making a, an effort to go out of your way to uh, get to know that person, and I mean, just even like at a lunch table going and sitting with someone that's different from you, has mm -hmm. a different culture and a different background because really you just can get a whole other um, world of knowledge out there by right. getting to know someone. Right. And we need to start embracing our differences and starting to actually want to understand why people do the things they do rather than judging them before we even know their reasoning or before we even know why they feel certain ways. And even once we do know why people do certain things or why they feel certain ways, we should not place any judgment on them. We should not hold them at a, at a lower level than, our, than we, that that we hold ourselves. And ultimately, we just really need to take a step back and look at everyone and realize that they are just like us. They want to feel loved. They want to feel accepted. They want to feel respected. Right, and I think the thing is we need to get past these preconceived assumptions, uh, act as the so-called barrier breakers. Barrier breakers. And <laughs> it being wintertime uh, uh, as well, I think it's very relevant to kind of uh, look at us as kind of like the snowflake, making yes. the change within, starting yes. with the snowflake and then turning that into the snowball. Right. Where we actually create a bigger societal change. And right. I think that's our key, key focus for this show right now. Right, so we as individual snowflakes, can go on to take our positive attitudes, our positive views of other people, our equal views of other people, and as a collective unit, we can go forth and create a snowball. And today, actually, Kev, we have a guest. Um, we have a special group organization, the University of Michigan Dance Marathon, 
We right. have two guests, actually, two representatives from the organization. Our first is Melanie, who is the internal director of Dance Marathon. Right. And we have Ashley, who is the public re relations chair. And we'd like to bring them on right now For sure. and see what they have to say All about right. their organization. All right. Great to get you guys here. How's it going? Hello. How nice are to you? meet you. I'm Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Kevin. Ashley, nice to meet you. Hi, Melanie. Thanks a lot for coming. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Ashley. So, as Dance Marathon, you all bring together a enormous group. It's one of the largest campus organizations at the University of Michigan, correct? That's right. And you, not only do you want to be a part of this organization, not only are your friends a part of this organization, but you actually go out and hardcore recruit members to help you achieve your goal of positively impacting the lives of children with disabilities and right. who maybe cannot afford the rehabilitic um, needs that they need in hospitals, correct? That's right. So what motivates, what, what motivated both of you actually? To kind of act as that snowflake, you know, I guess to, I mean, because obviously there's so many people that are involved in Dance Marathon, but to really just take it to like that bigger impact and that bigger level. What? Um, well, personally, <laughs> I, I got involved um, I got involved by just meeting someone who was involved in the organization before me. She was very, very enthusiastic about the organization, and I was like, okay, I can, I guess I can go check it out and see, right. and see what the organization is all about, and I think that's the most important thing. Finding that person who's enthusiastic, gung-ho about it. And then right. from your end, just being very, very open to, okay. to new experiences okay. and um, to learning. I don't know. Ashley, what do you think? Um, almost the same. My first experience with the Dance Marathon was actually at the marathon. Uh, we I went as a moraler for just a couple hours out of the 30 hours. Okay. And it was just, the room was full of energy. Wow. Everyone's having so much fun. And you can just tell that they loved it. They wanted to be there. So right. I was like, I have to do this next year. Go ahead. I would say that um, a lot of the drive to recruit more people into the organization mm -hmm. is that um, our mission is to educate and spread awareness about pediatric rehabilitation as well as raise funds. Right. And so as many people as we can inform about our cause, um, and at least get them to come out to an event or see the marathon and see the difference that is being made in the lives of these children through the therapies that we support. Um, and can you talk to us a little bit about that difference? What exactly do you see that keeps you going? Because the marathon is actually only a one one day year, annual event, but what actually keeps you going Pushing throughout the whole this, year? Towards this one day of the year. Well, we actually have a lot of events throughout the year, whether right. they're fundraising or just like awareness events with the families. Um, why do you why do you do them? Because like, it's the is smile it? is it the <laughs> smile on like the kid's face yeah. that you yeah, see that makes you know that one. yeah you've done it or okay. It's just I, hanging out with the kids even for the day. Like they are just amazing, and you just want to keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. So you can really tell the difference. Definitely. In their lives. Yeah. Um, actually, one of the families we had an, an event at the men's basketball um, game tonight, and a couple of the families came out, and two of the two of the little boys they give great hugs every time you see them. And they're just the most polite little yeah. boys ever, and um, it's their smiles and their hugs. And Ashley has a friend who gives lots of high fives. Oh yes, and, lots of um, high fives. It's, it's those little things that really keep you coming back every year. Okay. All right. So great. great. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. And up next, nice we are going to have, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> up next, we're going to have another student organization come on and share with us why they do some um, similar acts, but right. that go completely unrecognized. So stay tuned. We'll be right Perfect. back. Take care. prize-winning journalist who has held the post of executive editor of the New York Times since 2003. In his tenure, the New York Times has made some bold moves in the release of classified information. He has since been an object of criticism from the administration, while also promoting the so Callahan and I had the chance to talk with Keller about his paper, issues in today's media, and the impact of government on the freedom of the press. You can catch the interview on Newsfeed's special report, airing after the Thanksgiving break. Hey, are you buzzing? There's no doubt I'm buzzing. Are you buzzing? 
Oh, I put the B in buzzing. <laughs> hey, you buzzing? I'm bringing buzzing back. Yep. Hey, are you buzzing? Oh, for sure I'm buzzing. Break it down. Oh, I'm ready for it. Come on, buzz me. Man, why is everyone so buzzed? Duh, it's because they're watching the Entertainment Buzz on Wolf TV, the only place for all of today's hottest Hollywood news, movie reviews, and recaps of all your popular television shows. It's got everyone buzzing. Wow, now I'm buzzed. So get buzzed! Everyone and welcome back to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kev, and we're keeping it real, as always. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we would like to talk to you about a concept called Paying It Forward. It's right. based on a popular movie. Right. Haley Joel Osment, Helen Hunt. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. Right. You should check it out <laughs> if you haven't. It's great. And basically, um, this Pay It Forward concept actually is how we, Kev and I, envision our society being one day. Kev, do you want to talk a little about that yeah, concept? Yeah, so in the movie, uh, the student, Haley Joel Osment, he's uh, asked to come up with a solution of how to change the world, and his solution is very simple. It's he picks three people that he, that he doesn't even know and decides to give them something, whether it be um, some spare change or a shirt or wh wh whatever it is, some kind of gift, and he mm -hmm. says, don't pay it back to me, pay it forward to three more people, and those people pay it forward to three more people, and so on and so on, and by the end of the movie, it's almost like karma come back around kind of thing, right. where you know, people are already receiving what they initially put out. Right, so today actually we have a group from the University of Michigan who um, does unrecognized random acts of kindness as their goal of their organization and that organization is called DURAC and that stands for Do Random Acts of Kindness and today we have Michelle who is our publicity chair, Nick who is the treasurer and captain and also Geraldine who is a captain. We'd like to welcome them on right now from right. DURAC. Great. Thank you, you so doing? much Great. for joining for us today. Thanks so much. How's it going? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hey. Nice to meet you, man. For sure. Nice to meet you. Thank How's you for coming. You guys have a seat? Thank you. Yeah. Want to have a seat? Make right. yourself comfortable. I'm keeping it real. <laughs> stuff and, and I guess the thing that intrigues us most about your organization is you do do these unrecognized acts of kindness. And I mean, you literally go around campus, right, and just drop off. I mean, what's, what's some big act of kindness? Something that stands out. One of the... X you guys have done. Um, feeding parking meters that feeding have been expired. Okay. Oh, that's great. Okay. Illegal, but right. <laughs> do it anyway. That's cool. very nice. Okay. Um, I enjoy putting cartoons in the side of bathroom stalls oh, to wow. laugh. Right. You know, yeah, I've seen those actually space. before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's awesome, and like no one actually knows who did this for them. Yeah. But is your is your hope that in turn they would come around and do that for someone else maybe? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean part part of what Durek does is just it goes out and, and it does do this sort of uh, under the radar. Right. But um, at the same time we'll you know sign our cards to Durek once in a while. Kind okay. of let them know that there's there's this organization on campus they can be a part of. They can right. join. Definitely. These viewers you guys right. can join <laughs> and be a part of Absolutely. and like sign up for and learn all about and right and it's it's spreading across country i mean it's not I just know. here you yeah right. we just started five years ago it's okay it's like fifth year and you're huge now anniversary yeah. going on six years and wow right, and it's just amazing all right That's so at the end of the day after you do these things what what makes you what keeps you going what keeps you happy what keeps you wanting right. to do it again yeah. i think it's the surprise on people's face their gratitude and okay. excitement okay That's great. And what about when you don't see anyone, like, gaining the benefits yeah. from your random acts? I mean, obviously, a lot of these acts probably, like, you do them, but then you don't really get to see, like, you know, who you the affected of them. or, yeah. you know. I, I just like imagining what they, what, how their actions are when they okay. actually do receive the rack. Right, yeah. That's, okay. that's so awesome. That's good. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, is there anything else you'd like to add about, you know, spreading like how, how do you think this is like helping people and ultimately being the change in the world that right. we would all like to be well basically i mean it comes down to just having these good intentions right for a society right in, in the rest of the, the globe and yeah. going right. out 
and trying to make a positive difference. Right. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Intent. That's 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 if you that's if deep. you can go out and know that like that's your intention, you can expect that result. Right. Right. Exactly. Very key. Turn All right. Snowflake in the snowballs you talked about earlier. That's right. Tumbles on the mountain. <laughs> right. Down. I like that that's bit great. about that's intent. So intent. I think yeah. we're actually going to touch on. Um, our intent and how it should be a collective intent when we come back right, right. after the break. So stay, stay tuned. tuned to keep it real with Steph and Kev. Thank keep you so much for being here, Durak. Thanks, guys. Thanks <laughs> for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah. Houston, we have a problem. What? I missed Grey's Anatomy last week, and now I'm going to be so behind. Um, still missing the problem here. What do you mean? We're talking about Grey's here, the most watched television show. Okay, well, I get that, but what I don't get is why you don't just watch the entertainment buzz on Wolf TV. They have recaps of all of today's most popular television shows, plus you can get previews of upcoming movies and find out what's hot in Hollywood. I mean, there's no reason not to watch. That show's the coolest. They interview The Rock on that show. That's awesome. I'm gonna go catch the spit. Man, guys, I wonder who this week's short shot's gonna be. We're gonna go watch the entertainment buzz right now. I'm with them. Gotta go catch Grace. I guess everyone's going to catch the entertainment buzz only on Wolf TV. It's time for Mock Rock 2007. Will the men's track and field team be able to repeat? Come check it out Monday, February 5th at Hill Auditorium. Featuring this year's MCs, the Sklar Brothers, host of ESPN's Cheap Seats and the conjoined twins of Grey's Anatomy. Judges include football coach Lloyd Carr. Come be a part of the record-setting donation to Mott Children's Hospital. Welcome back to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. I'm Kev and we're keeping it real. And as Nick mentioned from Durac before the last break, it is ultimately our intent which will decide how we can affect the world. Right. We need to have that intent within ourselves. We need to have it, yeah. that conviction. It's that, an attitude. The basically. attitude, right. the, a sense of mindfulness that we do want to make our lives and everyone else's lives better, more enjoyable, right. more loving, and just ultimately more happy. And so it's important that we keep that intent within ourselves every day of our lives. For sure. And right now we have um, a story yeah. that will show just how far one act of kindness can go. Kev, do you want to? I would tell love us to. That yeah, story? I love to tell a story. So there was a student who was walking home from high school. This happened about several years back, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. And so he was walking home, carrying his books, and he was kind of like the nerd of the class, I guess you could say, sort of the outcast, always getting teased. Mm -hmm. And he um, dropped his books, and so. He ended up, uh, there was someone that was walking by that didn't even know him, but decided to help him pick up his books. And this small little act, it turned out that it would turn out that it had a great impact on his life. So the student that fell, the so-called nerd, mm -hmm. he ended up becoming a superstar athlete at the high school um, uh, through all four years and went on to be valedictorian. And in his speech, uh, at the very end of the speech, he had this to say that, you know, um, it was this person that helped him carry, carry his books up you know, this one small act uh -huh. that saved his life because little did he know that that very night he was walking home to go commit suicide. And the reason he cleaned out his locker and took his books home was because he didn't want his mom to have to do it. And it was just, when I first heard the story, I, I mean, it just really goes to show how just one small act, I mean, just this right. thing, little thing of like, you know, lifting up someone's pencil or book or whatever it is, right. you know, can have this dramatic of an impact on someone's yeah, life. That's amazing. It's incredible. Wow. But we actually have someone here with us today that is doing a, a lot of great work around the university right now. Um, his name is Jim. He's from Ex Expect Respect. He's a facilitator with them, and he's going to talk to us a little bit today about um, how that little one little act can make a big difference. So let's welcome Jim. Okay. How's it going, Jim? Hi. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jim. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much for coming. Oh, thanks, thanks for having have a seat. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So, Jim, as we were talking about in this story about this student that basically did this really small act, you know, I mean, uh, and then it just had such a great impact on this other person's life. Uh, I'm curious to know, like, what Expect Respect is doing around this campus and just, like, sort of uh, what the organization is all about in terms of, like, what they're trying to do to make an impact. Well, Expect Respect sees two ways of affecting campus. 
there's individuals affecting individuals. So as a student, you're a part of a community. And we really want to teach you that you have to act with respect in that entire community, in the way that you interact on in classes, in the way that you interact on the diag, and in the way you interact when you're at home, with, whether it be in the res halls, off campus, in an apartment. There's also student group and student group interactions. So you have to show respect when you are dealing with student groups of different ideologies of with you. Mm -hmm. um, what comes to mind is political ideologies, right. which causes a lot of conflict on our campus. Yes. Mm -hmm. With conservative, yeah. liberal, um, being a very liberal campus, conservatives can feel very isolated and have to lash That's true. out. That's true. And so it, there's respect in individual in the community as well as in your groups in the community. Right. So it's respecting the person, not their views or their political associations. Right. Right. It's just expect, respecting them as yeah. a person you because they like as a person expect views, it. Right, but at the same time you still need to respect them for like who they are as a human being. Right. We really try, like, we don't want, we love different views. We really mm -hmm. support different views. Yeah. But, and we really want to teach this campus you can have different views but still get along. Right. You, exactly. you can express your views strongly and respectfully, is right. really what we're trying to get. That's, That's awesome. Great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, so I actually um, heard that they're doing something at, you're talking about the dorms, uh, in, in, in particular, Markley. Mm -hmm. I heard there might have been like some uh, hate crimes going on there or something like that. I don't know what you guys are trying to do to sort of combat that. Well, we call them bias incidents. Um, bias, okay. incidents? bias incidents? Bias okay. incidents. It's Sorry. not really hate crime. It's okay. misunderstandings is really what a bias incident would be. So we're trying to bring IGR style dialogues into Markley. Uh, in right. Markley specifically, it's freshmen as well as it's a very large dorm. So over dinner, we're hoping to have dialogues about racism, sexism, oh, wow. classism, um, in a very all safe kind of environment, all, all, kind of all, the isms, all the isms out there, okay. and have dialogues to bring uh, to raise consciousness, really, um, right. because like we were talking about the awareness, awareness. right, the exactly, exactly, yeah. to start the ball rolling, kind of, um, in the first experience in social justice issues, uh, to be able to talk about it and learn more about it, really, really um, expre and to uh, learn about your own prejudices and oppressions. Okay, and then also, um, I was going to ask you, I've been seeing some of these faces around campus, like, uh, I see like all these different faces saying like, you know, I am this, I am this, I'm, you know, just kind of explain like, that people are, you know, like, they may appear different on the outside, but and they, they're very similar mm -hmm. with a lot of their activities. So I don't know if you want to talk more about, like, what, what's going on around campus with like, all these faces going on. Faces is a new ad campaign that we're starting on campus. It composes of basically an 8 by 11 piece of paper, and then you have a, a big face of someone that you might see on campus. And our goal is to put different adjectives about the person. I am this, I am this, I am this. Personally, my, I have a face on there um, as one of the prototypes, and it says, it's great I, am, <laughs> I am the youngest of five children, or six children, sorry. Um, I have five older brothers and sisters. I am Catholic, and I am an amateur chef. Things that you wouldn't get just from seeing the face, to show that we all are part of the diversity exactly. of Michigan. Exactly. And you know, that is exactly what our the title of our show is trying to remote right. is that getting keeping real. it real, exactly. getting it real sense, mm -hmm. know me for who I am, right. respect me for who I am, accept me for who exactly. I am, and mm -hmm. I, in turn, or even if you don't do that to me, I am going to do that to you. Definitely. Definitely. And um, Jim, thanks so much for being on our oh, show. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Expect respect, give it, get it. Everyone That's out right. there, for sure. Do it up. All right, thanks and coming up after the break, it, we'll tell you a little story about a starfish. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. It's going to be a good show tonight, Jesse. Better than Tuesday news feed, at least. Uh, you know we're right here, right? Yeah, guys, what's your problem? Hey, guys, no offense. All I'm saying is we're better at reading the news than you. What? We're better than you. Heck yeah. Uh, we totally take you in a talk off. Fine, it's a talk off. Shared at Sal, she shouts, down by the seashore, to swimmers that shout, shameful things, that sharks that shout, shameful things back. <laughs> Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle, pickle, pickle. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickle peppers? Is Peter Pe Oh no, go to weather, now! They're standing on their weather? No, go, go, go to weather, we're going to weather! I'm, what are you doing I'm here? I'm trying to do weather, can I'm, I'm doing weather tonight. No, I'm doing... I'm sorry, they, they told me... They put the best me. people on weather for tonight. Oh, cut! Are you That's kidding? Cut! Cut! Hey, it's my night, I say cut! Did you just see that? Obviously, our night Wednesday is a lot better, right? Of course! Be sure to turn in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night for all your campus, local, and international news. See you then.
and we're back to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kev, and we're Keeping It Real. As we talked about before the break, we're going to talk about a starfish story. So, Steph, if you'd like to read that. All right. This is a starfish story about someone um, tossing some starfish into the sea. Strolling along the edge of the sea, a man catches sight of a young woman who appears to be engaged in a ritual dance. She stoops down, then straightens to her full height, casting her arm out in an arc. Drawing closer, the man sees that the beach around her is filled with these starfish, and she's throwing them still, one by one, into the sea. He lightly mocks her by saying, there are stranded starfish as far as the eye can see, for miles up the beach. What difference can saving one of the few starfish make? Smiling, she bends down and once more tosses a starfish out over the water, saying serenely, it certainly makes a difference to this one. For sure. And uh, we actually have someone here with us today that is going to talk to us a little bit about how, you know, even reaching that one person is all worthwhile. So we have Sheila, Dan Sheila from Toastmasters. She is the director of recruitment there. So let's welcome Sheila to the show. Thanks for coming on, Thanks Sheila. So Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Thank you so I'm much. Have a, have a seat. Have a seat. Thank, you. Thank you. So, Sheila, we're talking uh, a little earlier about this starfish thing, and I know um, in Toastmasters, you know, obviously it's a speaking organization. Right. But, uh, like, I mean, when you give these speeches, I mean, you probably have to realize that maybe you maybe only impacting like one or two people, but is it sort of worth it to you to even go to that length? Oh, definitely. Oh, it's always like worth you. it to talk to someone to be able to get your point out there because right. I know that right. it's always. There's a problem people have with listening to each other. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you guys know that, I know exactly. that. And just being able to tell one person something with your story, the suicide yeah. story, being able to touch one person yeah. has a bigger difference than, right. than speaking to a hundred people sometimes. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you then instill within them the want to go out and, mm -hmm. you know, do something right. to right. help like someone else. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think, I mean, like we were talking about earlier, there's a little yeah. snowflake into the snowball. Like, and just, you know, how the, the one person, just even one little act can just catapult into, if we just had everyone in society kind of like taking this sort of mindset, you know. Right, if everyone just gave a little bit more, right. it didn't take so much for themselves, I think that would be really beneficial. Oh, right. that'd, be, that'd be exceptional. So you and Toastmasters so. just help someone to speak better, to gain more confidence, right. so that they can then go Get out and out. possibly right. help other people with their message or just help them because they see that you are, helped them. Right. Right. Well, hey, Sheila, um, thanks for being on the show. Actually, if, if you can, we're going to have you read this quote again, our kind of show premise quote, if you don't mind. Sure. It's the one about uh, the bishop that kind of set out to change the world, but had to kind of do a little self-actualization. Sure. When I was young and free and my imagination had no limits, I dreamed of changing the world. As I grew older and uh, wiser, I realized the world would not change, and I decided to shorten my sight somewhat and change only my country but it too seemed immovable. As I entered my twilight years in one last desperate attempt, I sought to change only my family, those closest to me, but alas, they would have none of it. And now here I lie on my deathbed and realize perhaps for the first time that if only I changed myself, then by example, I may have influenced my family and with their encouragement and support, I may have bettered my country and who knows, I may have changed the world. Change the world, everybody. That's what it's about. What are you? It's a great gonna, quote. What are you doing right now? What are you going to do today? What are you? You, 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 <laughs> you, you. What are you going to do tomorrow?